Hi guys. Um, so I attempted to do a live video at 8.30 like we usually do for devotional and the internet gave out about three and a half minutes in and I continued to talk for 13 more minutes uh, until finally realizing that it wasn't recording at all and it wasn't going online. So uh, apologies for that. We've had some weird internet things in this area actually, not just uh, at the church, but um, I've heard on Facebook pages in Lincoln City, something weird's been going on with the internet. So one of the joys of living in rural Oregon, but uh, apologies for that. So instead, I'm, I'm going to just post this up there. Uh, and I will be looking at the same passage. We'll look at John 21 um, and exploring that together. Um, the one important announcement that I had was that I'm wearing ties now on Tuesdays. So you'll see me in ties now for more often. Also, we are in a new month um, for our Bible reading plan for June. Some of you are asking about the Bible reading plan and can we put that online? Yes, I will put this online and it'll be in the link will be in the description below. So you can click on that to get to the Bible reading plan uh, for the month of June. We also have ones that are printed out. And if you'd like me to send the mail to you, you can get a hold of us and we'll get it to you in the mail. If you come on a Sunday, we only have 25 people in the building uh, for Sunday worship. But if you if you come, you can pick up a copy here. We have physical copies. So we want to get that in your hands. We really are enjoying uh, reading the Bible together. But let's go to John 21. I think it, there's a there's a important message that I think that uh, is for us today and was encouraging to me. So I want to encourage you with it today. Go ahead and open up to John 21 and let's pray. Lord, we just thank you again for a second opportunity to come before you and to learn from you and to receive from you uh, today. So we just ask that you would uh, be with us, Lord. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, God, to understand and receive and, and accept the word that you have for us today. In your name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Um, one of the things that I, I think is really interesting about this chapter of John, uh, two things that I think are interesting. One's, one's going to be more just an observation, and then one's going to be uh, more of the devotional side of things. But as I'm reading the book of John, I, I think it's really interesting here. We're pretty sure that John, the disciple of Jesus, who's writing, who's writing this gospel, we're pretty sure that he intended on ending the gospel at the end of chapter 20. Um, chapter 20 really neatly wraps up what John's trying to express in the gospel. And 21 takes it into a different direction. And in fact, at the end of 21, uh, at the verse, starting in verse 24, it says, This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down, talking about John. We know that his testimony is true. Now, that's a really interesting phrase. We know that his testimony is true. John wouldn't have written that about himself. That is people writing after John, possibly after John has died, saying we know that his testimony, John's testimony, is true. And so a lot of scholars, and, and I would agree with them, have come to the conclusion that John 21 the last chapter of John is not written by the disciple of John, or by John, Jesus' disciple, but by uh, some people or, uh, you know, some person or some people afterwards. Um, and that doesn't at all diminish its place in Scripture. Regardless of the who wrote this words, we believe that all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is helpful for edifying and for correcting and for um, piercing our hearts and, and exposing weakness and sin and all those things. We believe that all scriptures, regardless of who wrote it, it doesn't really, honestly, it doesn't really matter who the human author was. What matters is that they were used by God. What matters is that they were inspired by God. So I'm um, pretty sure that John 21 was not written by John, but it doesn't mean it's any less scripture at all. Um, it's just, just an interesting observation. Uh, 
So I want to look at now some a specific section of John 21, and it's going to be starting in verse 15 through verse 19. I'm going to read the first part of this. It's a conversation between Jesus and Peter. If you remember leading up to this moment, Peter, um, Jesus was arrested. He was taken before the authorities, and Peter kind of tags along behind him. And Peter finds himself in a courtyard outside of the, you know, the house or the building that they have Jesus, and they're interrogating him inside. And as Peter's standing out there, he's uh, approached by a few people. Three different times, he's approached by people who recognize him as someone who was near Jesus and one of his friends, one of his disciples. And so they ask him, "Hey, are you are you one of his disciples? Don't you know him? Don't you know Jesus?" And three times Peter denies having known Jesus. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't know him. I don't know that guy. He's some kind of crazy guy. I don't know him. And it happens three times, again and again. People come up to Peter. Don't you know Jesus? And Peter says, "No, I don't know him." And it's a moment of betrayal. It's a moment of you know, here's somebody who knows Jesus intimately. Can you imagine if? If a close friend or a family member, when the going got tough, they told people that they didn't even know who you were, you know. And here Peter has already confessed that he believes that Jesus is Christ, is the Messiah. But in front of these strangers, he denies knowing him. It's sad, it is. But it's also, I think, unfortunately, unfortunately for me, unfortunately for us, Something that happens on a regular basis. Maybe we don't deny Jesus with our words, but we deny him with our lifestyle. We deny him with our thoughts. We deny him with our behavior. Um, and sometimes we deny him with our words. No, I don't. I'm not a Christian. I'm not, I'm not weird like that. I don't know. And, you know, that's, that's the reality. That's the reality of, of life, of sin. So Jesus comes back to life. And now he's sitting and he's with Peter and he talks to Peter and he asks Peter a question three times, just like Peter was asked three times. And this is the question that he asks. Verse 15, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, says Peter, you know that I love you. And so Jesus tells him, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Um, sometimes we call this the reinstatement of Peter. But it's sort of like Jesus is walking Peter back through those three denials and giving him three opportunities to um, make right those denials. Uh, he doesn't come scolding him. He doesn't come berating him. He doesn't, he doesn't call him a traitor. He doesn't say that he's been betrayed. You know, I always get those Facebook posts. Now I know who my true friends are. You know, Jesus doesn't say anything like that. He's not dramatic like that. But what Jesus does ask Peter, he doesn't let him off the hook either. He says, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And I think implicit, you know, unspoken behind those words is sort of the question, um, you know, not just do you love me, but uh, what was that about? You know, if you love me, would you deny me? Would you betray me? Do you love me? And Peter says, yes, I love you. And that, I think, behind his words is sort of the acknowledgement that we are humans and that we still mess up, that I still mess up. And when I come to Jesus, you know, to ask for forgiveness, 
it's not because I'm trying to fulfill some obligations, because I really do love Jesus. And those times that I sin, those times that I fall short, um, they aren't indicative of who I really am. Who I really am is somebody who follows Jesus, somebody who loves Jesus. And that's who Peter is, too. He makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. But who he really is, his core, is somebody who loves Jesus. So Jesus goes on in verse 18, and he says, I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Um, kind of a little cryptic, but the author goes on to say in verse 19 that Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And so what we can kind of read into this in verse 18, when you were younger, you dressed yourself, you went where you wanted to go. Uh, you know, you had full autonomy over yourself. You could decide what you wanted to do and what you wanted to say. And in fact, in a sense, Jesus is telling Peter earlier, when you denied, when you denied even knowing me, that was you following your own path. You know, that was you deciding what you wanted to do. That was you looking out for you. That was you uh, putting on your own clothes and going and doing what you want to do. But then he says, when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. In other words, when you're old, when you've matured, going forward from now, there's going to come a time in your life, Peter, where you'll be given the same choice to deny me. But this time, the next time that it happens, you're not going to deny me. You're, gonna, you're not going to do what you want to do. You're not going to put on your clothes yourself and go do what you want to do. You're going to stretch out your hands and allow others to do to you something that you don't want to have happen so that you can keep your testimony. And in fact, we find out that Peter dies uh, as a martyr under the emperor Nero. And then at the end of verse 19, it just says this. Then he said to him, follow me. Jesus says to Peter, follow me. Jesus says to Peter the same words that he said to Peter at the beginning of their relationship. Uh, back way, you know, years before, before all this had transpired, Jesus saw Peter mending a net and he said, follow me, follow me. And Peter did. He left everything and he followed Jesus. And in a way, Jesus is sort of bringing Peter back to that moment. He says, follow me, follow me. Come now. Let's, let's do this again. Let's, let's have the adventure. Come back. Let's do this again. Uh, a lot of Christians, I think, in this world today are in a place, you know, we had um, 1990s, I think, were big for church youth groups. Every church youth group was huge in the 90s. My generation was in youth at that time. And um, then they, they kind of left. A lot of people left the church. And now I'm noticing maybe a few people thinking about that relationship with Jesus again and maybe desiring to come back in some form and to them to you to me also I look at these words of Jesus to Peter Peter who should have known you know Peter who had a relationship with Jesus but denied him and now Jesus is coming back to me saying do you love me He's coming back to us. He's coming back to my generation. He's coming back to you. He's saying, do you love me? Do you love me? And now it's up to you to respond as to whether or not you love Jesus. And if you would say yes, if you would say yes, I, I do love Jesus. That, yes, there are times that I've doubted. There's times that I've stepped away. There's times that I've denied Jesus even. But maybe more and more you're realizing that somewhere deep inside some somehow unable you've been able unable to let go this connection with Jesus that it's been there for maybe hidden but it's still there then i think you have to be honest with yourself and honest with God. 
and you have to say yes. Yes, Lord, I, I do love you. There's something there that I can't deny. And this is what Jesus would say to me. He would say, follow me. Follow me. He'd bring you right back to that time when you knew him before. He'd bring you right back to that first encounter. And he'd say, let's, let's go on an adventure. Follow me. Be my disciple. It's going to be different the second time around, of course. You're older, you're wiser, you, you've had more experience. Maybe you know a little bit more about the ups and downs of life and about the ups and downs of faith. A lot of skepticism maybe about churches. I can understand that. I'm quite skeptical about churches. But if there's love there, then there's love there. And Jesus wants you to follow him. He says, follow me. Let's go on this adventure together. That, I think, is um, an encouragement that I receive also. Because like I said, uh, I certainly am not going to sit here and say that my walk with Christ has always been perfect or is currently perfect. I'm not going to sit here and say that uh, I always do right and never do wrong. I come back to Jesus and I say, Lord, uh, forgive me. And Jesus looks at me and says, uh, follow me. And I do. And I try my best to do that. And I encourage you to do that as well. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you love us with such deep love. Lord, we're like children who go and uh, do exactly what you ask us not to do. <laughs> when we come back to you, I think some of us in our hearts, Lord, we, we harbor feelings of distrust or doubt. But you are like a good parent that no matter how many times your child goes astray, when they come back to you, they're always going to find love. And your love for us is deep and abiding and does not ever cease. And so I pray that that love would fill our hearts and our minds, that it would be inside of us and touch those deep inner parts of us. Be with us today, Lord. Guard us, protect us, teach us how to follow you. In your name, Jesus, and, and for your sake, we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining. Wednesday morning prayer tomorrow, 9.30. Wednesday night Bible study tomorrow night at 6.30. Hope to see you there. Both will be on Zoom. And looking forward to the day when we can meet together again in person. God bless you. Have a great day.